you know, father time catches up with us all, and that's the one person he ain't going to be able to out dribble or out shoot. Now I wonder if Natalie, let's bring in Natalie. Uh, she knows about the, she knows more about the Warriors than a lot of people know about anything else. Uh, and so I would say, Natalie, the reason I'm on Clay's side in this conversation is because what he went through. I, I think he kind of he kind of saw his basketball mortality. He he actually touched it. It's like those people who have these outer body experiences, and then they come back. Oh, I saw it. I saw what it was like in the afterlife. And you know, I'm gonna hold on here I for a little the bit sky. longer. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, and so he went through. He really did go through basketball hell. Looked like he was on his way back. Got injured again. Worked his way back. And now, uh, in, in that in that season that he worked his way back, they happened to win a championship. And he had some moments where he looked like Clay. But it's his first career ejection, Natalie. That blows my mind. How do you explain what you saw from Clay last night from afar? I know. Let, but let's. Let's be observers. Let's use uh, let's use our, our powers of observation and our analysis <laughs> to figure it out. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, this is like an ongoing thing with Clay since he's returned. So no, he hasn't been ejected, but this sort of struggle that he's going through with who he is as a player now versus what he used to be before. And I don't think we know yet what clay is going to be but we do know from marcus thompson's latest piece that he doesn't like when people say are you going to return to the old clay or be you know what's the new clay like he just feels like he's clay and obviously in his mind he's determined to get back to who he was um that's probably unlikely just because you know you're aging your different things like regardless of the injuries he probably wouldn't have been who he was a few years ago but that being said i think there's a lot more that clay can still give and he's just trying to get there and i think that he the inability to just flip on a switch and do it like gets him frustrated and so he couldn't like do it in the game and so tensions got high him and booker have like a history not anything crazy but they go back and forth you know for a long time before booker kind of had this rise they were both like the two guards and you know so there were some comparisons so like now booker is like you know kind of like in hit hit his prime he's like one of the top players in the league and i'm sure clay doesn't like that he's being overlooked so i think there's some underlying things there and he just got triggered but i will just say as a fan of the team and someone who like follows them closely and kind of all the discussion on nba twitter i find the phoenix suns fan base and and just their entire organization oh. to be very arrogant for a team that hasn't done much so Ooh, i think that also I wow. think that also is just like, wow. that oh, went yeah. into the four rings. The fan base. Yeah, you said the organization. Hey, hey, Doc, she mm. said the organization and As the As a staff, base. label, and a crew. Yes. <laughs> fan and base and core. Wow. That's how they carry themselves. Like they've won something. Call out and the they whole haven't. Southwest. Can we get the whole just Southwest, them. please? Right. The whole right. entire. <laughs> I think it's look, hey, I think it's a commonality with Chris Paul led teams, but they kind of take on this persona. Ooh. And so like they're walking around like, hey, we've done something, although they laid down for Luca and the Mavs right in the second round. So like you haven't done anything. You didn't win in the in the in the um, Western Conference when you went there a couple of years ago and you got embarrassed in the second round. So pipe down. You're talking to four time champions and, you know, Ooh. I get it like. They're going to oh, be confident. Respect. Have some respect when you when you enter They're the room. They're going to be cocky. Right? Yeah. Like you enter like, the room with a little any... bit of reverence. Right. I don't expect any NBA player to be like, "Oh, I'm not as good as you." Right. They have to have confidence, and they all believe they're the yeah. best. But like, they're going to just remind you, like, "Yo, come on, like we're four time champions, son. Like, relax." That's it. Yeah, I I, 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 I got to tell you, Natalie, <laughs> I'm a, fi a big fan. Love your work. And I'm not used to hearing people hate the way I hate. So I'm impressed by this because that was that was some Chris Paul hate. That was there's no insurance okay. coverage for the shots that you were shooting to him. That was that was vicious. <laughs> that was absolutely vicious. Now, I will say this about the Golden State Warriors as good a team as they are and as amazing as they have been over these years. I have to say that of those four rings, one is due to Kyrie Irving's bulky knee and the other one belongs to Kevin Durant. So when they have to really go head to head with somebody, they tend to not do that well, i.e. LeBron and the block. But all that being said, Clay Thompson does have a more successful career than Devin Booker, and he has a reason to go at him. But again, the real king ain't got to say I'm the king. 
And it's a reflection of the fact that he knows he isn't what he used to be. He's never going to be what he's going to be again. And had they run against a remotely qualified team You're in the finals last year, they probably shouldn't have won that series either. So that's You're how I look it, at Doc. it. That's how I look at the Golden State Go Warriors. Ahead. They took ahead, three Natalie. rings off of LeBron. Like, I don't know what you mean, like, against LeBron. I would tell you that the only reason that LeBron won that series is because, as Stephen A says, they got a stimulus package. And also, like, Draymond Green got suspended. And we all know, whether y'all want to deny it or not, that Steph Curry was injured. We don't need to rehash 2016. It's been the Warriors League and specifically Steph Curry's league for the last several years. They've been to six of the last eight finals. You don't keep getting mm. there because there's all these issues issues like oh it's an injury or this team was out or that team was out like I could go back to the very beginning of the NBA finals and every year for every playoffs I could mm. put an asterisk on everyone so you're not going to do that to the Warriors they're the top dog I know a lot of people have some issues with the light skins running the league but that is what it is okay <laughs> that is wow what it is. wow wow where are, we, where are we going to this colorism here I would not, Let's not go there. Yes. This, 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 this is yes. some intra black it violence is <laughs> <laughs> it is only Wednesday. It is only Wednesday. I love this. <laughs> hey, but you know what? I, you know, I mean, if we're going to talk light skinned on light skin violence here. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, one like Clay Thompson was always the most like one of the most likable players in the league. Like everybody loves him, you know, for the most part. And he is. Yeah. So like, that, yeah. I'm just saying like, you know, Phoenix Suns, they're like, we work video and just always acting like they're ready champions. It wears on people. Like, just get there and do something first. And they just haven't done it yet. So, again, I think, again, I think, like, Clay was projecting a little bit. I think there was some other stuff behind the scenes. But that's all that is. And at the end of the day, Clay Thompson is a shooter. Killer Clay. He's a shooter. That skill is not going anywhere. He's going to be around for a while. And you know what? I'd say this, it, and it's not yeah. just last night. It's not just it's not just Clay talking to Phoenix and maybe the arrogance of Phoenix without winning anything. Remember, Clay last year they won the finals, and he now he's he's he's, he's checking his receipts. He's like, who's this cap from Memphis talking about strength and numbers? That's what we said, and they haven't won anything yet. So it's this, here's my takeaway. My takeaway from this, and it's this is going to change my sports arguments going forward when it comes to the NBA. I am going to call myself out, out. Uh, Natalie and Doc. I have gotten soft. I've gotten soft in my sports arguments over the years where I've said these things, some uh, mumbo jumbo about, hey, if a player doesn't win a championship, there are lots of factors there. Just because a guy hasn't won a championship doesn't mean he's not one of the all time greats. No, 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 no. We're not doing that anymore. We're judging by championships. When we talk about the NBA. Why? Because the players do it. Exactly. That's what they judge by. Exactly. And they go at it and they and that's how Clay knows how to get under Devin Booker's skin. You got nothing to come back on me on that. Okay, you can say, hey, I'm all NBA, I got this, I'm better than you. What what have you won, son? What have you won? There's no comeback, there's no clap back for it. And players do that all the time. If you watch the inside the NBA set uh, uh, on TNT, great show. Shaq and, Shaq and Barkley. Right. Well, when they get heated, what Shaq do? That's why you never won. It's true. And it even was sad. Kenny. I, I love this. And he I mean, wasn't even that, Kenny too. That's fair. Hey, Kenny. Yep. You know That's what? Fair. I, I, I love they this, do, Doc. They do it to Kenny. Uh, last thing I'll say, Doc, on this, and I'm going to pass it to you. It's been said. You'll love this story. It's been said that when uh, when they had Dream Team practices, these Dream Team practices, the original, 92, Dream Team, these practices were legendary. It was said that Jordan used to prevent... Clyde Drexler and the mailman, Carl Malone, for being on the same team. He said, that team can't win because <laughs> they haven't won nothing. I ain't putting them on the same team <laughs> in practice. <laughs> okay? So players get into this. Uh, it, it, yeah. it matters. They do. They do. And I mean, quite frankly, I don't think it was necessary in this particular point. I understand why he did it. I'll say this, and this is just me. I'm not a player. I'm a fan. I'm a supporter. I'm an analyst. Look at these things. I don't consider all rings equal. Real talk. Like I never have. And when I look at championship level teams, you could be a champion. You could be a Hall of Famer and you could be a Pantheon guy. 
I don't really see anybody on the Warriors. I never have. There's tons of Hall of Famers. The Warriors have at least three Hall of Famers. I don't think they got a Pantheon guy yet. I'm sorry. I'm still. Put, I'm, I'm not putting Clay. I'm not putting Clay above LeBron, even though they played in the same era. He has never been, in my view, the best player in the league because he's not a two-way player. Clay, on the other hand, knows that he is just Steph. a Hall of Fame you player. Mean, I don't think mean, it's necessary Steph. for him to be that aggressive with Devin Booker. That's what I'm saying. You said you you meant Steph. You said Clay, but you meant Steph. You said you're not yeah. putting Steph above LeBron. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Okay, I'm just no, yes, yeah, yeah, Steph will never be above LeBron under any okay. circumstance because he's not a two way player. He, he plays That's one half of the game one half. Well, but there's this thing called defense and he's basically been a turnstile throughout most of his career. That's how they lost that final. No, that's 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 no, they lost that finals for reasons I've already stated. But in terms of two way mm. player and all these like new terms that people want to make up to disqualify Stefan, let me just say this for one. New the whole terms. Idea that <laughs> because the whole idea that he hasn't been uh, a defensive player or that he doesn't play defense in these turns out that is so antiquated like that tells me you have not been watching the games doctor and that you know that concerns me because I know that you know better <laughs> secondly um when it comes to though like impact we need to think we need to start reframing the way we think about the game right mm -hmm. and so like you're good if your team wins. I your see goalposts moving. <laughs> your in, no, no. Your impact on winning is how you should determine who's best. Like, why does it matter if, let's say, Kawhi Leonard is a better player or a better, let me say, a better defender than someone if he doesn't get as many wins? At the end of the day, if you get more wins with the player, you are the better player. It doesn't matter. And there is no doubt that the most impactful player, the one that's had the most impact on winning for the last several years, is Stephen Curry by most advanced metrics by when you look at the games, by you look at the number of wins they've had. Like, these arguments are ridiculous. Like, if he gets seven rings, you're telling me he can't be better than ring, than LeBron? That's silliness. It doesn't okay, make sense. Listen, no, uh, he wouldn't Jason, be better than Jordan either. Jason. No, not as an individual player. <laughs> well, LeBron is nowhere near Jordan, so that's fine. Jordan is the GOAT, right? But, and then but everything that's what I'm saying. Like, after... like, like, you can get a lot of rings. John Sally's got six rings. I wouldn't on, say to John Sally. I mean, like, John they, Sally. Look, I don't, I've never thought, I've never thought that rings alone, I've never thought the rings alone were what made you the best player. And I never said Steph wasn't good. I say he ain't a Pantheon player. He He's is. not Kevin better Garnett than LeBron. Kevin Garnett was just on Over TV calling him a top 10 overlap. player. Kevin Garnett was just on TV calling sorry, him a top I, 10 I did... player. And he's not a Pantheon? Like, the NBA players look at him like this. So no, we got no. to, like... Pantheon, Mount Rushmore is like four people. That's four people. Ain't room for Steph. Ain't room for Steph. Who's he gonna take down? Who's gonna take well, down? You gonna take down Kareem? Go, no. But, like, we need to you're gonna have take this down Will? You gonna take down Jordan? You gonna take down LeBron? He's not better I than any of those four players. I mean, he's great. He can look up at Mount Rushmore, <laughs> but he can't get that career it. isn't over. Those Ooh. other guys are retired. So when you come back, I would love to talk to you about why he's going to make his case and ultimately be a top five player when he retires. By, by the way, by the way. Oh, when they um, add an extra face uh, on Mount Rushmore? Because right now it's only got four. <laughs> <laughs> he can I, I want to say uh, Natalie meet Jason Jason meet Natalie. I think you guys are going to get along famously. It is family. I love it. So look Na Natalie. I wanted to have you a part of this conversation and and doc. You're going to see a lot more of Natalie. <laughs> Uh, she is on board. She is a. I'm excited. She is a member of the. I'm crew. excited. She is a member of the crew. I'm excited. So nice as well. to meet you. My mom is a big fan of you, Dr. Jason. So, love you. Oh, thank you oh, so much. And, uh, thank you so much. And mom's gonna be texting me like, what, what, what happened with that? What y'all? You gotta say, mom, it's no, no, no. It's cool, mom. We're good. Maybe they you got no home training. Watch your argument. <laughs> Why are you talking to that man like that? Hey, listen, this is what we do. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.